So uh, there's a very interesting uh, transformation here. We're going from propaganda image to a kind of uh, a, a photograph that shows us more about um, the place itself, right? And there were paintings of this nature, both of these by, uh, you know, the, the one on the right by a military artist doing a romantic picture of Constantine, um, the one on the left by a non-military artist um, doing a military seizure which happened without anyone there to defend it. And you see the French soldier and um, the, the comprador, uh, the, you know, the, the native aristocrat who's siding with the French. Um, walking side by side, and, and these guys over here, they're signing the wall. The French army was here, uh, 1839, October 28th, 1839. The, the landscape is sort of taken over by inscription. Um, and, and here, I wanted to sort of point out something that is, I think, very compelling, the notion of a painting which we understand is propaganda, right? The idea that that this is something which is being done for the government, right? For the king, for the, uh, the artist was on an expedition with another son of the king who was doing this expedition through Algeria. On the right, though, you get, you get what is, um, you know, this is 1856, a fellow named Gustave de Beaucourt. This is before uh, Carlton Watkins in Yosemite, right? This, this is the very early um, uh, sort of landscape photography that would emerge. Um, and it's of this uh, Grand Canyon, which is just underneath uh, the battle painting that you saw before. But you don't see the city from here. All you see is this wonderful canyon, this beautiful natural form. There are no people in it either. The, the, the natural beauty takes over. And as much as the picture on the left challenges the notion of landscape by being a vertical landscape full of cliffs with a very narrow passageway through it, the, the landscape on the right is equally vertical and equally overwhelming. And that sense of difference uh, of how exotic this place is is something which is very much part of this colonial landscape, right? That it is different and exciting. Um, so I'm going to get, I'm going to try to draw this up. Um, but the, the idea of, of landscape is expressing, uh, of, of photography is expressing a kind of truth um, is kind of important. And I'm using these two images of Constantine once again um, to talk about that. The picture on the left is the original French bridge, the original bridge that was there built by the Romans. Um, the pic that bridge collapses, and a few years later, the French build their own bridge, right? And I think you can see in this image by uh, Baldus, who travels from France all the way there, just, he's a bridge photographer, and he goes and makes his picture of these bridges. Um, uh, you can see the sense of the French colonial project, right? We produce this incredible industrial feat that is so much better than what was there before, right? This was built by the Romans, the last colonial conquerors in that part of the world. Um, so this idea of, of photography as communicating a kind of reality about the landscape is very important because it, it, it works to solidify the claims to that landscape among French viewers. It's a kind of picture making emerging from technology but also emerging from a, a sense of landscape, right? So that this beautiful landscape, which looks very much like a French town, is actually in Algeria. Um, and, and the idea of playing back and forth between it's a French landscape, but it's an exotic landscape, is, is, is essential. The point that I'm trying to make is that while these photographs are documents of the French transformation of that portion of North Africa, that they eventually called Algeria. There are also documents of the way that the French created an Algeria out of images, landscapes that reframed that place and made it into a, a holistic um, seeming, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it was a sensible whole. It was, in effect, a colony. So how does all this relate to what's going on today? Um, a, a more recent picture, this one by a, a, a Belgian fellow named Jan Schuiten. Um, uh, I think it's called um, uh, Green Roof City. Um, imagining an alternative landscape or reimagining our relationship to it is absolutely uh, a part of what artists um, are currently engaged in as they were engaged in, in the 19th century. So let's say we've come full circle and, and we hope that what we're doing now will put us back into contact with a way of engaging with the world as opposed to imposing uh, a different kind of view upon it, right? And turning it into something else. 
let's hope that we are going to develop a kind of ecological perspective, right, from our projection, as I believe um, Schroeten is a good example of. Here's a picture maker making a landscape, a, a cityscape, really, but his idea is full of glass and trees and, um, you know, a kind of responsiveness to the natural world uh, as opposed to a, 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 you know, building right on top of it. But on the other hand, he is sort of, it is kind of a totalizing vision. It is um, completely distinct. Um, are we imagining, are we projecting a world we imagine ourselves in, or are we doing as the Native Americans, uh, imagine, relating to the world in which we live as we create works? What would that mean? What would it look like? What would an ecology of 21st century urban life be? And um, I'm showing you a slide of, of Public Farm One, which is a project from last summer. At, um, at PS1, uh, they're highly advertised here. I mean, at this point, I'm in an institution, and so in a sense, I want to finish, in a way, by, by looking at what institutions can do as well to, to contribute to um, this kind of transformation. We live in an era of guerrilla gardeners, future farmers, and uh, city, city halls, white houses, museums, and even, I understand today, the Vatican um, have planted gardens, right, instead of where they used to have lawns. There's a kind of transformation going on, um, uh, turning over empty spaces to growing things and allowing us to reimagine the kinds of places we live in. I think that's, you know, fantastic, frankly. But let us remember also how easily artistic developments of previous centuries introduced multiple and sometimes conflicting structures of perception into our consciousness. And let us go forward into a domain in which artists are aware of their ability to generate consciousness that can lead to historical change, right? Um, the idea of artists responding to the world is, is still absolutely real, but the idea of artists generating transformations in the way in which we see, perceive, apprehend, and experience the world is absolutely fundamental uh, as we go forward. In my mind, that, that's what's at the core of the empire of landscape, this idea that place can be reframed um, through a kind of prospect, through a kind of ecology, that we can end uh, with, with a world, uh, an urban world, which is nevertheless an ecological world that, that is uh, self-sustaining and interactive as opposed to dominating. Thank you.